Hey guys, Caneborn back today. I'm going to be playing Divinity Original Sin 2. This game is fantastic. If you're living under a rock, but you enjoy this type of game, which is a isometric, top-down, uh, turn-based combat, think maybe Baldur's Gate, XCOM, a little bit of Diablo, um, you know, that sort of a vibe. If you like that kind of a game, uh, if you played Pillars of Eternity recently and thought that was the second coming of this genre, then prepare to be blown away. This is my game of the year. I don't want to hype it up too much without having shown it to you, but I absolutely adore this game. The freedom of choice, the different class types, all of the different things that you can do in this game is just astounding. So I'm going to try to dive into it quickly because I've got a lot of ground to cover. I do want to mention briefly, I'm not dead. I apologize for not having a video up for almost a month now. I am taking uh, Advanced Java as well as some other very difficult classes in my second to last semester of a web and software development degree. So it is very challenging for me and time consuming. And I have that on top of 46 hours a week of work and a uh, basically girlfriend and a son. So I'm a very busy person. Something had to give and unfortunately that was YouTube. That will not be the case going forward. Very soon I'm going to have a seasonal active layoff and I'm going to try to be much more active on YouTube, so I apologize. The good thing is I have a huge backlog of games that were sent to me by developers to cover on the channel and I will get back to some Elder Scrolls stuff as well as Conan and all of my you know stuff that I do all the time. Uh, so I'm going to skip past that. I'm going to jump into this game, which is absolutely gorgeous, by the way, uh, for what it is. Um, you can have up to four-player co-op and multiplayer. Um, you can play with just two or three or four people. You choose how many AI you want with you. You could just be yourself, uh, a duo. There even is a special perk you can take called Lone Wolf that makes you stronger if you're by yourself or with one other person. So whether or not you want to play with one person, two people, three people, or no people, or various numbers of AI, it's all up to you. So a lot of flexibility, and that seems to be what this game is all about. Um, so when we do hop into multiplayer, there are four difficulty modes. Explorer is basically just easy mode. I just want to read the story and feel like a badass. Classic is normal. Tactician is hard. And then honor mode is with permadeath. I will love to do a uh, permadeath campaign at some point, especially if I can get some people to play with me multiplayer. And I might do that as like a live stream if you guys, if there's a good reception to this series and if you enjoy it. I hope really and truly that you guys do like it. It's a little different from a lot of the games that I play, but I'm going to be playing it and I'm going to be playing it a lot. This game's like 150 hours long, so I'm hoping I can take some of you along for the ride. So we're going to go with classic mode or normal. Uh, for now and just keep it there. I'm going to shut up during the story parts. There aren't a lot of them, but there is a lot of dialogue and I'm going to try to let you hear uh, most of it when it's important because it is beautifully done. So there is a lot of different class choices, um, race choices, talents, all these different things. So I want to go through them all, but I want to do it very quickly uh, so I don't take up too much time with that. So there's dwarves, elves, humans, lizards, um, and then undead versions of each one, which basically the gimmick of undead is they have this play dead ability. They can pick locks with their finger. They don't need lock picks. Um, they also can be healed with poison, but they will be hurt by any normal healing spells. So it's a gift and a curse. There's a lot of poison using enemies and poison on the battlefield, but your cleric isn't going to be able to save your butt. Um, and then they have these origin characters, each with a unique backstory um, that you can cover on your own. I won't spoil a lot of that for you guys because you can figure it out, but these are some of those uh, heroic type characters. So luckily for you, I've already decided what character, class, and everything that I want to do. I kid you not, the first time I tried to play this game, I thought, oh, I'll give it a shot, and I'm within the two-hour return window for Steam. Yeah, right. It took me four hours to make a character. Not kidding. Um, so the reason I, the character I've decided to go with is Fane. I like his backstory. We'll get into that a bit, but, uh, well, here's a brief synopsis. You woke up and your world was gone. The last of your kind, you hide behind a charmed mask, searching for the truth about a history no one ever knew existed. That's enough. We'll figure out the rest as we play. Uh, but he does have this special ability called time warp where, uh, basically he can cast it on others or himself and you get an extra turn. That's pretty cool. He gets one of the human bonuses, which is two uh, initiative, uh, which allows you to attack quicker in the pecking order when the turn-based combat starts, the higher initiative is. Plus 5% critical, which is good because I'm going to be a rogue. As I mentioned previously, he can play dead. And um, there's going to be some other little things here. So um, first you've got your origin, then you pick your appearance, um, then you go into 
the skills, you can customize the class that you started and abilities. You go into talents, which are these sort of background skills I'll talk about in a section. Uh, in a second, you have your tags, which are kind of like your backstory. Your character comes from these different uh, backgrounds. So outlaw, for example, would allow you to kind of give these little nefarious criminal type answers and dialogue where noble would be very rich and refined. And you know, you'll know about good foods and stuff. They would even go so f as uh, as far as to let you pick an instrument to play during battle or things like that. So you'll hear this type of music more often than not. I am very partial to this band Suri like wind flute. All right, so we're going to go right away to appearance. I am just going to make him look very dark, this charred approach. I like the very basic skull. I don't want this fancy gems and stuff on my face. One of the things I like about Fane is he's able to have, as an undead, a full head of hair. The other undeads have this really messed up, nasty looking hair. So I'm going to take advantage of that and also give him a pretty epic beard. So he's going to look pretty cool for an undead. Um, also, I'm going to go back to Origin, and we're going to switch. And I should talk about, besides the races, the uh, class archetypes that are available. So you have Cleric, Conjurer, Enchanter, Fighter, Inquisitor, Knight, Metamorph, Ranger, Rogue, Shadowblade, Wayfarer, Witch, Wizard, Battle Mage. All types of crazy and cool stuff. Um, I, for the purposes of this playthrough, my main character is going to be a rogue. He's really going to be more of a shadow blade, but there's some of the presets I like better on the rogue. So we've got the appearance done. Um, going through here, you have your attributes, abilities, and skills. Talk about that very briefly. Attributes are like in most games. Strength is the fighter or knight, you know, sort of uh, skill that's going to be most important. How much crap can you carry? How hard do you hit? That sort of a thing. Finesse is dodging and hitting with, you know, dual wielding and bows and such. Intelligence is for magic. Constitution is for hit points. Memory is how many skills you can have slotted. And then wits also is sort of a rogue type trait where you get higher initiative, you get a more crit, you can find uh, traps and find treasure and stuff. So that's kind of cool really for any character, but definitely rogue based. Um, then you have your abilities. So you have your combat abilities. You've got all these different schools, if you will. Um, warfare is going to be, again, your physical damage stuff. Uh, a lot of cool stuff in there. Knockdowns and, uh, you know, uh, gap closers. Huntsman is more for a uh, ranger type with a bow. Scoundrel is going to be what I'm going to have here because I'm going to be a rogue. Notice that each one actually has a uh, modifier. Like this gives increased crit and movement speed. Whereas Warfare is physical attack damage, and then Huntsman is from high ground. So depending on your playstyle, these are going to be important. they got Pyrokinetic, which is Fire, Hydro for Water, Arrow for Air, Geo for Poison and Earth, Necro, Summoning, and Polymorph is pretty cool. You have like cloaks, you can turn people into chickens, you can grow horns, you can grow wings. Um, very cool. You can put points into the various different types of weapons, single, uh, two-handed, ranged, and dual wielding. And then these skills are interesting, but we'll get into that when they come up. And then your civil ab abilities. You've got sneaking, um, thievery, you've got bartering, persuasion, and lucky charm, and then telekinesis and lore master. So, so many things to pick from from the beginning. I'm going to drop dual wielding. I can still dual wield. I'm just not getting the bonus, which is the 5% damage and 1% to dodge, uh, because I want to pick up Geomancer right away. That's going to allow me to use a poison ability that can heal myself. So it gives me a, a self-heal right away. Uh, I do want to pick up Polymorph right away because that's going to give me a cloak, which is really powerful and helps me stay alive. It's kind of hard to choose between those two in the beginning, but I think I'm going to go with the heal initially um, rather than the cloak. Because in an instance where I can't cloak, I can heal myself. And, you know, I just feel like it's going to be important. All right. And also it is a damaging attack, which is range, so that'll be helpful. All right, so other than that, I'm going to leave all of those starting things. I'm going to change my skills a bit. I'm going to remove adrenaline, and I'm going to take that poison dart, which allows me to heal myself. So now that we've got that, we look at talents. Talents are these background sort of passive abilities. Um, automatically, I have Ingenious and Undead, which I've explained. I think I'm going to keep the pawn. The pawn basically lets me move a certain amount at no cost, which saves me turns to heal myself, to stealth, to kill, to do so many other things. And as I level up in Scoundrel, it's going to scale up to the point where I can move halfway across the map without even using any, uh, or the battlefield rather, uh, without using any skill points. So I'm going to start with that. There's a lot of stuff in here that I might end up using. 
I mentioned earlier that you could play by yourself or with a two-man team. You can use this perk called Lone Wolf. It gives you two extra ability points, two extra recovery ability points, 30% vitality, 30% armor, 30% magic, armor and, uh, and double invested points and attributes and combat abilities while you're adventuring solo or with one uh, companion. So that's something you would take if you're going to play with that style. I might do that style, but I'm not sure. And for these purposes, it might be fun to show you guys four different characters because I'm doing it on YouTube. So I think I'll leave that where it is for now as the pawn. Tags I can't change because I'm doing an origin story character. It's set, but you can usually switch these to your liking, and I'm going to keep my wind flute. So we're going to go ahead and start the game. And that was a lot. I apologize. The game is warning me that I'm playing an undead. Uh, it's telling me I have advantages, like being able to pick locks. I can walk inside a death fog, which is something that kills everyone else. But it is also telling me that I can be uh, healed with poison, and healing stuff will hurt me. So that because that is a very different play style, they wanted to warn me. So I'm going to shut up while we do this little story section here. There's not a lot of cutscenes like this, but uh, they're kind of nice art style, and I, I want you guys to follow the story. It all happened like I knew it would. A single drop of source magic. And like flies to honey, the monsters swarmed. The rebel panicked. The carnage began. And the Magisters pointed their fingers at me. Just as I'd planned. I was shackled and collared. And sent to Fort Joy. I'd come here to kill Godwoken. But instead, I became part of their story. All right, so that woman is on the boat with us. She wants to kill us, uh, but somehow is also a prisoner. So we'll see how that plays out. Um, we're all on this ship. We have these collars on, which uh, suppresses our magic, which is that source magic that calls those evil spirits when you use it. Apparently, I can do that too eventually. But not right now because of this little shiny blue collar I'm wearing. My character has that unique helmet, I'll explain in a minute, but the skull is going to talk to me. Well, now, aren't you a curious sight? If I'd had a mask to hide my bones as well as yours, maybe I'd still be walking around today. Where'd you get it? There can't be many curios like that in the world. Boast that you crafted it yourself using a tool to rip the faces from mortal creatures. Is that a fact? And your voice? You rip that from them too. I've never heard such silken tones from a naked skull. Admit that your voice is something of a trick. Your words are tone uh, in tone are projected directly from the minds of others. Ha! Should have known it was a parlor gimmick. Still, you'd best keep that mask on. The living don't take kindly to seeing their future staring back at them. So she's not kidding. She's warning me because I'm playing it undead that if they see my true face, most people will try to kill me. Um, one of the cool things about this is that I can actually morph into other you characters, you, so I become a human. You your hand. Your fingers trace a line from and it's not just that I look human to other people, I can actually use their buff. So I'm going to use this encouragement buff from humans. But then like two seconds later, I can turn into a lizard. And now, during combat, I wouldn't be able to do this much. I'm not in combat right now, so turns are flying by very quickly. Uh, that's the, that's the uh, racial ability of the dragon. Oh, it can blow fire, which is pretty bad. cool. Nothing left to do, really. Um, I can even turn into a dwarf. Like, just literally anything. I'm going to lose this mask very quickly. Normally, I have to cut people's faces off in order to get these abilities. Uh, but anyways, well, let's not get ahead of ourselves. So I'll switch back to my normal form. <clears throat> but no matter what, I have this mask on right now, so people can't tell that I'm undead. Ah, you're up. There. Not too tight, I hope. The collar, I mean. Oh, not to worry. Every dog has to get used to its leash. In the meantime, your next stop will be Magister William. All passengers have to be registered in the ship's manifest, and he's the chap in charge of the logs. 
You'll find him on the other side of this deck, in the officer's quarters. So you can see, ba based on my background, and again, I couldn't pick with this particular character because he's a uh, backstory character, I have Scholar and Mystic. So these are unique dialogue choices I have for him. I'm going to try to shorten most of the unnecessary, boring dialogue here. So Good you don't God, have to see too much of it going on. But there is a lot of exploration, a lot of looting. Everything is contextual here, so you can see I could loot that dead body, but because it's a crime scene, um, that's a problem. I could kill these guards if I want to. I could talk to them. There's just literally anything you want to do. Thanks, Skyrim, Come in that on. respect. Please, no, sir. Except I would argue that there's even more freedom in this game uh, compared to Skyrim. <clears throat> so a lot of dialogues I could have here, but I know that there's not really much important what these people have to say. So we're just going to go it's right where we're supposed to. Good, good. Magister Williams is just about done with the last passenger. You faring okay so far? Tell him I'm fine. Glad to. You head on in now. Well, otherwise he would have talked my head off. All right, so this is where you're supposed to register, but we're about to walk into some shit. Standing at the center of the room, you spot a sorcerer haughtily eyeing a pair of nervous-looking magisters. They keep their crossbow trained upon her as she's being interrogated by an officer. So you admit it then? You murdered that poor fella. Yes, I did. But of course, that was only the big... She turns her head and looks you straight in the eye. There are others whose lives must end. That sounds nice. Good God, the woman's mad. You there, sorcerer, go and fetch Magister Siwan. We need to do more than collar this maniac. We need to shackle her hands and feet. Uh, yes, sir. And turn to leave. This murderer must be brought to justice. By all means, do as the officer says. But you had better hurry, because... She reaches for her collar and simply removes it. Well, that's an empty trick. I'm just about to create a scene. So do a man quickly! If she casts source, the void worker will come. They'll end us all. She smiles with wicked satisfaction. Precisely. So it's some pretty crazy special abilities that you can use once you get your collar off. But it has this nasty side effect of calling these creatures uh, that you'll have to deal with. My so mask. they're kind of teaching she you that right it. here in the beginning. If these savages see me without it, they will have my skull for a goblet. Uh-oh, she took my mask, so now they can see that I'm undead. So, again, you want to grab pretty much everything you can, because you're going to be able to either sell it or use it. See this dog here, I want to mention, you can get an ability that allows you to talk to animals. I highly recommend that somebody in your party, especially if you're playing multiplayer, gets it. It is a lot of fun to be able to talk to the animals. Some of the Damn. funniest stories have come Doesn't out of that. Well. Like we had a turtle that fell in love with a rat, and we had to catch it for her. So I'm going to show off some of my roguelike abilities. When you're sneaking like this, it shows people's line of sight. It shows where they sort of can detect you, but also where their actual line of sight is. So I'm going to get in behind these guys, because I know no matter what I say to them, they're going to just try to fight me. That's just how this part starts. Somehow that initial attack failed, but I was able to get this jerk.
already that uh, poison self heal is coming in handy. I've already examined him and seen that he does not have uh, opportunist or any uh, special abilities, so he can't hit me when I'm moving. So I'm going to keep going behind him to get my criticals. And that should do it, but it didn't. But he'll probably die of poison after this turn. Actually, he's not poison because he still has magic armor. I'll explain that to you guys in a bit. <clears throat> All right, so I won my first uh, little bit of combat. So when you're fighting people, I don't know if you noticed when I hovered over them, they've got three bars. They've got the red health bar, they've got the gold armor bar, and then they've got the um, last one, which is uh, magic armor. So magic armor will block stuff like poison and different elemental and spells and such. Um, regular armor is just going to absorb physical attacks. And so basically any of your special abilities, for example, a knockdown is considered a physical attack. So it's going to be blocked until they run out of physical armor. Then they can be knocked down. There are certain abilities that ignore armor, uh, but there, there's not a ton of them. And uh, same thing goes with magic and poison and such. I couldn't poison that guy because he was wearing, he had magical armor. So I'll show you here. So this guy here, before he dies, well, he's dead. <laughs> but he, he had all three bars. All right, so these are these nasty little monsters that come out when people use source magic. So, um, as I was talking about that pawn ability I have, see how I can move this far without using any AP? So I'm going to do that, and then I'm going to use my gap closer, and it also gets not only a hit in, but it puts me behind them. And then I'll use my triple attack. That puts me off to a good start. Uh, let's see. Let's actually inspect and examine these. So they don't have any talents either, so you've always got to watch out for this opportunist skill. Because if they have it, they're going to hit you if you try to move on their turn. I learned that the hard way quite a few times. I decided to hit him even though the other one was already weak. Because um, I could get behind him with the free movement. I might actually be in trouble. Okay, uh, let's see, 12 and 5. Well, this is 2. Hmm. I'm going to finish this guy off. And then heal myself with poison. Oh, but that'll heal him too. I think I can do 7 damage. Sure as I'll hope I can. Right, I have. Oh, look at this. I can move behind him for zero AP. Then I'll use my triple attack. That should finish him. Oh, fuck, I missed. Oh, that could have been the death of me. Alright, so barely surviving these initial fights. I wondered if I put it on uh, hard or something this time on accident. So, a lot of cool stuff here, like this is oil that would start on fire. I have oil on me, which also is just, just dissipated, but could be real bad. But I can take this barrel of water and just chuck it into the fire and put it out, which is pretty cool. Uh, but I don't need to go that way. I'm going to try to escape on this lifeboat. That means there's still a chance. So he basically is just going to tell me to climb aboard. But I'm going to say there's still people downstairs and I've got to save them. You're going to be the death of us. I'm only going to skip very simple, stupid dialogue like that because you don't need the fluff. Especially in the beginning here. So this gives me a little bit of an introduction to all of the other heroes. I'm going to fight, but we're going to see all of them. Oh shit, I forgot to heal myself. I'll start out healing myself. And, um, since it costs zero AP to move, no, I'm not gonna do that. There's two of them, three of them are coming my way. 
Hmm. I think I might just play dead for a little bit. I'll just lay in the poison, that'll heal me up. I thought Void Woken was supposed to be scary. They're kind of showing off some of their magic. She's an elementalist. This guy, I think, is using a bow. Here's the red dragon. They who are about to triumph salute you. He's kind of a tanky uh, fighter or warrior type. Hmm. Let the games begin. She's a rogue. Beardless bugs won't sink the ship on my watch. I'm ready. <coughs> so you can see some of the ground effects there. He's actually frozen the ground, so the enemies can actually slip on that. If it's wet, they're more prone to being electrocuted, like our, on the side here where the water's flowing in the windows. He just did a uh, multi-person buff. Alright, so I'm going to get off my butt. I've got enough uh, healing done at this point. So I can move that far for free. And I cannot use my gap closer yet. I can. So if we'll do that. We'll use the throne beggar. Finish him off. And that'll do it. Prince has just healed himself with a potion. <laughs> She's using poison, which helped me. The AI is actually pretty smart, too. She knows that I can be healed by poison. That's why she did that. And they'll do a lot of things that will help you uh, in combat as well as hurt you intelligently. That's one of my favorite parts about this game, actually. It makes this game a challenge that the AI is really intelligent. Alright, so we've won the day. We need to move. Now we need to get off the ship. If these characters die, by the way, they're perma-dead, so and this fight was set up to be very easy, but there are some more difficult fights later, and the AI will jump in and try to help you if they're friendly to you, but that can end up getting them killed. So you have to be very diligent about what you're doing. Sounds like she needs help. All right, so we have escaped the ship, sort of, I think. Wow, that is an ugly looking thing. I think I kind of got left behind, but I someone's gonna help me. Honorable Dallas. We lost a ship sailing sorcerer prisoners to Fort Joy. We assume some escaped and broke their collars. Their vile magic lured the Voidwoken. All who were aboard are presumed dead. Yours faithfully into eternity. High Judge Orivan. All right, so that basically seems like it's the tutorial. There's a little more to it than that, though. This game is incredibly long, something like 150 to 200 hours, if you kind of look through stuff thoroughly. Um, so actually, that was a brief tutorial-ish thing, but now I'm on an island where I still am stuck wearing this collar, and this, to me, feels like the real tutorial. I feel like Chapter 2 is when the game proper starts, where it really starts to open up. So there's still plenty to, that you can do here. In fact, this whole well, island, I think, took us like 15 to 20 hours over the course of several days when I did survivor. it multiplayer. 
Um, it's pretty big. Depending There's on a one's lot to do here. Survivor, of course. <laughs> but the goal of this point of the game is to get off of this island and progress. So, I can't remember. I thought I found a hood right away that I can cover my face with. Yes, I did. I better do that. Because people do not like seeing me undead. Um, technically, there's no real advantage to dual wielding right now, but I think I'll still keep doing that. I mean, there there is. I mean, I get this uh, flurry attack, which is pretty cool. When you see these little swirlies on the map, on either your uh, mini map or the major map, that is going to show you like a fast travel point. Green are NPCs that are going to be most of the time friendly. And red are enemies that are roaming around ready to cause trouble. But uh, yeah, there's tons to do on this island now that I'm here. A um, bunch of side quests. Pretty much everybody I talk to is going to give me different missions. I can rush through this and try to get off the island right away. But really, I would suggest that you take your time. I think I got up to like level 5 or 6 the first time that we did this. And um, yeah, really took my time, did almost every single possible side quest that there was. So I think I'm going to cut it here. I don't want the first video to be too long, but uh, rest assured, I'm going to accelerate the pace at which I'm dropping videos now. Thank you guys so much for checking this out. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, I'm sorry I've been away for so long, but I'm going to increase uh, the volume as the, busy, the videos are coming out. And uh, hopefully you find this interesting. Let me know in the comments uh, if you want to see more of this game. If you don't, I'll definitely have a lot of other content for you guys. As I said, a bunch of developers have given me freebies. Um, I've, you know, I can, of course, buy some new games. And there's lots of different stuff that I want to play. Might be checking out Fortnite Battle Royale. Might be going back uh, to PUBG and a whole bunch of other games that I've covered in the past. So thank you guys so much for watching.